saving your own potato seed is very simple. I like to select uh, medium sized ones that are blemish free and keep them in the dark as best as you can until a couple weeks before you're going to plant them out. I like to plant whole potatoes just because I can save enough uh, and so a medium size works really well. These ones got a little too much light because they were up in my seed starting house, uh, but it's totally fine. Um, they just have kind of a head start. I just cover the, the shoots up and they do awesome stuff. Perennial arugula is an amazing green. It comes up uh, nice and early in the spring and it regrows from its same root stock or system and it abundantly reseeds itself. So I'm just moving some reseeded from a bed to under my Italian plum tree. <laughs> collecting some seed from improved Siberian kale and again I leave uh, some of my kale plants in the previous year so that they uh, spread up the next spring and they make an abundance of leafy greens. I love eating the flowerets but they also make seed. So now we can collect the seed, improved Siberian seed stock for next spring. Probably about a thousand seed right there just from two plants here. So it's really beneficial to leave some plants in. This is a winter boar hybrid kale. This is third year. So kales can be quite perennial actually. With the chard, often they'll make small leaves up the stalk that you can pick for your salad then they'll also go to seed in the summer. These immature um, seed heads, dill seed heads, are great for uh, fermenting pickles. They're like kind of in between nice flavor. There's, you know, the, the seeds, the mature seeds taste more anise-like, more licorice-y. And then you know, the fern leaf is the most dilly fresh green flavor. So I like to put all three stages. They actually have different flavors. Primarily a goji berry bed that they've been growing for the last uh, two years, I think. And we got four big bushes in here. And I did clone a couple. I just stuck them in the ground in the shade in the spring. Here's one of my clones from the spring. It's growing. Oh, we got this other one. It's growing here. Just stuck that in the ground in the spring as well. And it rooted. Two other plants started now. They're really uh, starting to sucker and get larger. So this one was laying on the ground and it already started rooting, so I accidentally pulled it up. I love that. So it's pretty long. pretty much large enough now that next year it's, they're going to take up this whole trellis. This uh, season I did grow the beans on here. So this variety growing here on this trellis is emirate and I planted it from saved seed and we're going to save some more. I'm going to mark an area and save a bit more. I still have quite a bit of stock actually, but so I'll just need to save a little bit uh, for more backup. And uh, yeah, this 
I really like this variety. It grows nice and long, very stringless, and quite tender. I do like to leave some of the first maturing ones for seed just to keep the genetics nice and early. Yeah, these are interplanted with goji berries, making use of space. I really love the flowers on this variety. <laughs> Look at that. Looks like the uh, goji berry is making beans. And we also got some carrot seed out of this bed, along with um, collard seed. Collards I left in from last year so that they would make seed so I could collect it this season. And we also got some uh, dusty rose poppy seed out of here. Carrots make beautiful flowers for beneficial insects, so I started leaving them in the bed a lot more. I tracked the pollinators, so I left a couple of carrots in here to, to flower. Some nice carrot seed here we're going to collect and some dusty rose poppy seed as well. These collards I left in last year so that they would uh, produce some food but also make seed pods. good to collect off of a couple of plants unless you really know that one plant did really awesome. So by collecting off of a couple of plants you'll have more diversity and that equals uh, more stability. I think that should be enough seed and we'll just clean off the chaff with a fan the rest of it. So quite a productive bed uh, in terms of uh, seed collection and it's funny, my uh, these guys, the gojis, they uh, started blooming in the fall. I treated them really well uh, all summer long and gave them compost and fertilizer and then they also had the beans in there fixing the nitrogen for them and they really took off even with the beans uh, tw twining up them. Always cut your bean vines off and leave the, the roots in the ground because they have um, modules on the roots that are uh, that collected uh, nitrogen uh, from the atmosphere and they, they're stored in these little modules on the roots. So you want to leave those in your bed so that there is uh, nitrogen for other plants for your following season. couple clips on there next spring if we need it hopefully get some berries uh, next summer may collect some coriander seed for planting as well marigolds are really taking off in the fall it's got a lot larger and they're just they're loving the cooler weather actually All the cilantro seed here. In the autumn, I gathered cilantro seed and threw it under my Fuji apple tree guild, and it came up in the spring, and now I'm collecting it again. Buttercrunch lettuce has been growing for probably eight years now, self seeding, and sometimes I collect it in the fall and I sprinkle it out where I want it to come up in the spring. So this is under my Fuji apple tree. We have April Green, which is my favorite. That's really awesome because it's not a hybrid. So I'm gonna be saving some seed. Uh, I left one in. So this is one of the early ones. This is an April Green and I, I cut it early. You can see its head came right off there. And it's been sprouting back. So I think this is gonna be a good one uh, to, to leave in to over winter so that we can collect seed for next year. So really excited about that because it's, it's wonderful when you find 
a variety that you like and does well and it's not a hybrid because then you can save the seed from it. They can go really long. They're super hardy. They can take, handle frost and whatnot. You can even leave them in over winter. I've done that before and harvest them in the spring, some of them, and or uh, collect some seed because they're biannual as well and they will do seed next year. I may leave a couple in to do that as well, I'm trying to get more and more seed collected on my own to be more self-sufficient. Really small seed, but lots of it. I'm gonna be bringing these pepper plants inside to overwinter them. I'm gonna prune them back a bit. Just keep them in a nice sunny window like this. Those are those blackberries that I planted uh, mid-summer and we decided to make a few fruits there. I don't know if we'll make it. I just left them. They're growing vigorously still. But this little shoot here, I noticed these little nubs on it and uh, it like broke off there and then it's trying to root right there. And it was a bit kinked here and so this is coming right off. I think if I stick that in the ground, we should have ourselves another nice plant. Yeah, there's another one. Wow. Doesn't look like I have any problem propagating these plants. I mean, that's how they do propagate themselves. They usually, they fall over and come out like that tips and plant themselves but that's just that's fast <laughs> i guess they do grow like weeds well, that's fine i'll probably take that as a cutting stick them in some pots there's two satin plants and two uh triple crown i'm gonna put these in a tower uh, i should do that this fall actually and get them upright so the spring they're all ready to go all right, so these are the seeds I've been collecting on the Snapdragon colored tomato, tomato, crystal peak, marigold, carrot seed. Oh.